Hello, Welcome. everyone. Welcome to The Good Life. Oh, we've got a great program today. Yes, we do. You're going to learn eight. That's right. Eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Different things that are going to help you in life. And if you're a young person watching, this is even more important yes, for absolutely. you. Yes, absolutely. But not only life, sweetheart, your business, your relationships. Yes. Good program today. Amen. Pastor Daniel Haight is with us. And from the Celebration Family Church in Fort Myers. So we're going to have a wonderful time in the Lord. Yes. Tony LeBron is going to be bringing us our music today. A song, The Lion and the Lamb. The Bible says that great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. He is awesome when we come to this place to worship and to exalt His awesome and holy name. We bless the Lord. Coming on the clouds, kings and kingdoms will bow down. And every chain will break, his broken hearts declare his praise. For who can stop the Lord Almighty? Our God is a lion, the lion of Judah. He's roaring with power and fighting our battles and every knee will bow before him our god is a lamb the lamb that was slain for the sins of the world his blood breaks the chains and every knee will bow before the lion and the lamb every knee will bow before Every knee will bow. Listen up. So open up the gates. Make way before the King of Kings. God who came to save. The God who came to save. Is here to set the captives free. For who can stop the Lord
wonderful guest today that you listen to every word and you're going to be successful. You're probably saying, oh, you just say that. No, you listen to every word that he says and you will be successful. Pastor Dan Hyde. Thank you so much. Sure appreciate it. It's so good really to have you do. for that. Thank you so much for having me. Now, why did you write this book? Well, it, you it's know. It's kind of a strange yeah, thing. Yeah, it is. Even the title, right? Keep it simple. Yeah. Actually, the, the, um, the, uh, the company uh, retitled it. I had to keep it simple somebody. Kind of a play on keep it simple stupid, you know? Uh -huh. Keep it simple somebody. And they just said, no, we're going to keep it, keep it simple. We'll just keep it at that, you know? Yeah, I just thought that, um, you know, I'm a big, uh, big self-educator. -educa I believe in educating yourself. I believe in studying, getting books, CDs, whatever, you know, blogs, different things to educate yourself. And so I had, I had, I have just about every self-help book out there. And then the Lord started reminding me of a situation that happened in my life with this gentleman that I wrote the book about. And uh, the Lord began to dealt with me, deal with me about writing a book. And I was like almost arguing with the Lord, why? Why another book? Another self-help book here? But a lot of times they're written from just, from not an inspiration background, I'll put it like that. Yes. You know, there are a lot of numbers and a lot of figures <clears throat> and a lot of quips, right. but they're but maybe not as much substance. A lot of sizzle, but not as much substance. And so that's what I've tried to do. I've tried to read, write this on a level that anybody can get it. Yeah. And we've really made it simple. Hmm. Well, tell us, starting off in your young life, about this man that gave you some of these hints. Well, I was, I was as I was talking to you earlier, I was part of a team, a front group that would go into different Caribbean islands and we would uh, set up crusades. So there'd have to be media and there would have to be interviews from the newspapers and we'd go to the local television stations, all those things, teach in the churches and then we would have a crusade after a week of doing this stuff. Right. Our pastor would come down and we did it in many of the Caribbean islands. And my contact person was a man named Charles. I didn't have a whole lot of information about him. I knew he was a man of substance and a man of tremendous influence on his island. And he, and he had, was at one time the governor or what would be the, like our president here in the United mm -hmm. States. And so I knew how much influence he had. So he really helped us with all the streamlining of renting equipment and getting permits and all that stuff. But he was my contact person. So I got to spend a lot of time with this guy. And he began to tell me about his life being an orphan boy, not knowing his mother and father and growing up basically all by himself just like a little boy wandering the streets mm. barefoot and um and so i you know after of course after i met him and he's driving us all over town or driving me all over town uh people were coming up everywhere we went people would come up and shake his hand and ask him to do things for him and i was like who is this guy you know <laughs> i mean i knew something about it but i didn't realize then we started driving around and his name is on the car dealerships and his name are on the the strip mall different strip malls and jewelry stores and so i finally asked him after a couple of days you know charles how did you do all this being an orphan boy or actually i said how did you do this you were did you inherit this? How did you do it? He goes, he started laughing. He said, no, I'm, a, um, I'm an orphan child. I never knew my parents. And, and so he began to go through a whole series of things teaching me how he learned all this stuff and some of the contacts he made and some of the really great opportunities that happened and some of the things that he learned negative lessons from also, which were, which were quite, quite unique. But he would, just, um, he would just say, look, the first thing I would do is I would learn it and then I would earn it. So he said, I'd learn a lesson or I'd learn, and then I would capitalize off of it. He started off being like a little page boy for Western Union back in the day. My dad was one in New York City, actually. But uh, so he would take messages all over this certain country and he would learn and meet people that needed jobs done. And then as just a boy, eight, nine, 10, 11 years old, he would work it out where he'd get somebody to do that job for somebody and make money off of it. A man in a lumber yard needed all this lumber carried off somewhere. 
Well, he didn't know how to do it, but he didn't even have a driver's license or a vehicle, but he knew a man with a truck. And he ended yes. up having, he ended up making money off of that for 20 years. And so he just learned certain things. He learned it and then he would earn it. Amen. Now all these things really weren't spiritual, but they are godly. No, absolutely. Yeah, no, I mean, a lot of lessons in life are, uh, can be both spiritual. I mean, when God teaches me a lesson, it's usually both sides of the coin. Right. There's but natural things and there's supernatural things. I love the fact that he gave you scripture too. Yeah. That was one of the first things he yeah, gave you. Exactly. When I read that, I thought, oh good, he's a man of God. Yeah, no, he did. So he he'd be a great example. One of the th scriptures was about asking for grace. Yeah. And even Moses asked for grace. Yes. But the next one was about the kingdom. What was that scripture, Matthew 6? Yeah, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and everything else will be added unto you. Amen. So he wow. was he, quite a unique guy. Very, very unique guy. He, he made a lot, a lot of money and became very politically savvy and all, all, the, all these things. He came, he rose to the top of his businesses, whether it was, um, whether it was p politics, whether it was business, no matter what it was, he rose to the top because he used these spiritual principles and he believed God. And he had a time in his life where it ac actually really affected him not knowing his parents and he had a downfall after that but then clinging to Christ he rose right back up to the top and Praise of course God. there's a lesson in that for all of us because oh, we yes. all go through go through stuff well he really? said there's two things <laughs> yeah two things he lived by keep it simple but the other one was very interesting he said I did not do what poor people did yes. Yep. I live by that. Don't yeah. do what poor people do and keep it simple. So what did he mean by that? Well, How do poor people, what do they do to make mistakes? Well, it's funny. I, I, you know, there's sometimes my wife and I will kid around. We'll go, walk through the grocery store and uh, I'll say, look, Joss, look at that girl or look at that young man. You can tell they just came from the gym. They've got their workout clothes on and they've got their uh, shopping cart. I said, let's walk around. They're in really good shape. Let's walk around and see what they shop, what they get. And of course, they're getting all the vegetables and lean chicken and all this stuff. And they're walking a little bit faster than everybody else and checking their little pulse and all that. And so what the little lesson you can learn from that is, here's what fit people do, follow them around. Well, that's what he learned as a very, very young man. Don't do, if you wanna be successful in life, don't do what unsuccessful people do. Because there are patterns that people, uh, you almost can call them ruts or routines. We all have routines in our lives, but unfortunately they can turn into ruts and we'll get stuck right where we're at. I mean, when you realize, I, I went in the book, I, I went through and I picked out about 15 or 20 things through surveys and the internet and, and just interviewing people. What are the things that you do on a consistent basis? And I found unsuccessful people, there are certain attributes in them. I mean, they, a lot of them, a lot of them don't have a vision for their life. Right. They don't know where they're going. I can guarantee everybody who's watching right now, I can guarantee you that they weren't just sitting around here one day walking down the road and somebody stopped and said, hey, uh, you want a TV network? No, some, somebody had, God had to put a dream in somebody's heart and that dream had to be contested for. It had to be fought for. Somebody had to realize that dream. First of all, hear that dream, visualize it, internalize it, and then they had to seek God after it. A lot of decisions, a lot of ups and downs and, and that sort of thing, but this just doesn't happen by accident. This happens because God puts it in somebody's heart. And that's what happened to that gentleman. He just saw what unsuccessful people do on a regular basis, and he refused to do that. Yeah. And he said it's all about choices. It's all about choices. That's the one thing that President Trump said one time. He said, we all have 24 hours in a day, but none of us use it the exact same way. That's good. Uh, Isn't that deep? That is. That's <laughs> very good. Now, he well, uses uh, about... 21 hours a day. <laughs> That's what I understand. He has a long day. <laughs> I didn't get that gift. <laughs> he said to you, always forgive others and always expect the grace of God. Yeah. Yeah. Why I, is that so important? Well, making I, sure you forgive. Yeah. Well, I, I think because it, it, it can turn into a, you know, 
you can it can turn into you carry that stuff around on you and pretty soon it's like carrying a bunch of baggage with you you can't get anywhere with it you got to forgive like god's forgiven us we got to just show the grace of god wherever we can grow you go i mean god's unmerited favor is available jesus didn't say you know or the scripture doesn't say for god so loved the perfect people and he said for god so loved the world you know and that's where we all came from. We all came from the same place, the world in it. And that was kind of a stinky, smelly, terrible place to come from. And, and we, all, we all had to experience sin, and we didn't have to. We all experienced sin in our life. And the good news is once you become a Christian, you can experience the grace of God. Total forgiveness, not because we earn it, not because we deserve it. It's a free gift, and anybody can reach out at any time, and we can take a hold of that. Amen. Mm -hmm. Because he loves us. Yes. Yes. And uh, it, you can't do anything where he's going to stop loving you. And these principles will, will work for whosoever. Yes. Brother Hagen used to say that all the time in Bible school. He would say, you're a whosoever. So whosoever will choose this day. We can all choose. If we want to be successful, go in inventory. Find out what unsuccessful people do. And stop doing that and don't repeat it when you find yourself in a bad habit in life you know stop doing that there's no virtue in hitting your 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 thumb with a hammer a second time right. learn it the first time right that is right. it's painful and it hurts and it's not going to get you where you want to go you said self-talk is so important would you talk about that sure well we all have, you know, I think, in the, I think in the book I put it, I used a CD player as a, because I wrote this a couple of years yes. ago, but really more like it would be almost like a, the rewind on just about anything on our computer, you know. Our, our mind is the greatest computer ever made, and we train our mind. You know, uh, there, there's these, these pathways that are in our, our mind, and we try and bring every bit of information down, one of several several grooves so to speak in our mind these narrow pathways in our mind and we try and even if it really the information doesn't go really fit on that pathway we try and cram it through there every way every way anyway and so what happens is sometimes we hear good information but we'll run it down the wrong pathway nothing good could ever happen to me Nobody in my family's ever been prosperous. Nobody's graduated from college. Nobody in our, and we run all this stuff and we keep it on replay over and over and over again. And our self-talk gets so negative that we can never rise to a low expectation. You know, That's if right. your parents tell you that you were not a good person or that you'll never amount to anything, that curse has to be broken it does. and it does it won't break itself it has to be broken through bible principles on renewing Amen. the mind repeating saying what god says about you Amen. would you give just a couple of scriptures look at the camera give a couple of scriptures to somebody that says i'm a new christian i don't know any scriptures what could i look up what could i write down that i could start meditating on sure and well, Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2, I mean, for us, those of us who got saved or were Christians during the 80s, our Bibles will just about open to that scripture right in there. Yes. Uh, Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2 says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present yourself a living sacrifice unto God, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And it says, don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Not the removal of the mind, the renewing of the mind. So we've got to think the thoughts of God. And you do that by choosing it. In Corinthians it says, take no thought by saying, what shall we eat, what shall we drink, what kind of clothes do we put on? No, thoughts are chosen. So when you find yourself thinking negative, oh, woe was me, I could never do this, nobody in my family, you, could, you have to reverse that and just say what God says about you. Right. Amen. Yes. Here's a good one. I can do all things through Christ who go. strengthens me. Yes. All things? All things. All things. <laughs> all That's things. what the Greek says. All, all things. <laughs> you all can things. do all things. There's a great story in there about Joseph and his brethren. Yeah. And how they hated him. And I don't know the reason, but there wasn't really a reason. Uh, 
tell us about that story. There's some very interesting things. Well, yeah, I mean, Joseph's brothers were, I guess the, the closest thing we can say is Joseph's brothers were jealous or yeah. they envied him, I guess. And boy, those are sins of the heart when you just want to bring somebody else down because God is shining in their life. I, I always want to, when I find out that God's exalting some, someone in some area. I want to go meet I, him. Yeah, I want to find <laughs> out what they're doing right. And maybe this is something I can duplicate by principle yes. or process. But of course, that's what happened. He was, he was the, the chosen, the favorite child because at the time he was the youngest. And, and his father made him a coat of many colors. So it distinguished him among all the other brothers. Now, the other brothers didn't have to be jealous or envious. They could have just shine, They could have just begun to shine in the areas that their God, that their father favored them, because I'm sure he did the same thing to them in different areas. Yeah. They were all very smart business people. They ran the the family business and all that. They were very successful people. So they chose. It was a sin of the heart that they they chose to be jealous and envious. And of course, uh, those things will take you down and get you to think some really rotten thought, thoughts. And before long, they. Uh, you know, he came out and he came out and with his, he got lost in a field. If you actually study it All out, right. he got lost in a field. The farmer had to say, yeah, your brothers are over there. If you just keep going down the fence line, you'll find them there. And uh, they sold him into slavery. But God had a bigger plan. Yes. God had a plan not only for the kingdom of God, but he had a plan for Joseph's family. Yes. Because there was going to be a great, uh, a great famine come in. And Egypt was going to be, ultimately, Egypt was going to be the place where everybody had run to because of the wisdom that God gave Joseph. Yes. And Pharaoh hired him eventually to, um, to come up with this plan. And, of course, he had to go through a prison, had to face a butler and a baker and all these things. And, but God worked that whole plan all the way around. And it's just like people watching right now. God's, God's working a plan in your life right now, and none of us here want you to miss it because God's got a plan. He's got a the Bible says in the book of Jeremiah that he's got a plan for you and it's for good and not for evil. Do you think Joseph would have been where he eventually got had he not forgiven his brothers? Boy, I, I, you just, you don't, I, there's no way of knowing <laughs> it, but I don't think so. I don't either. And I think <laughs> that if, if I could put it this way, and I, I know we're all mature enough to understand, and I hope everyone watching is also, but I think God knew that Joseph was mature enough to go through the hard times yes. in order for God's plan to come to pass. You know, Jesus had to go through some pretty hard times too. And it took a decision for Jesus because, you know, Jesus almost started negotiating with the Lord almost as he was going on the cross. You know, Lord, not my will, but your will be done. But he, had, he struggled with it also. That was his humanity. But there's, there's hard things all of us go through in life. And we have to realize that there's a bigger picture God doesn't cause all the problems. He didn't cause for this man in the book to become a or little orphan child. But God had a plan in it. Yes. And I think God knows those of us that are strong enough that we can, we can go through the hard times in life and we can make it to the prize because when God, God's thinking of all these other people that are going to be influenced by it. Amen. Time for a break. All right. We're going to take a break and... Some more music by Tony LeBron. Stay with us. There's a lot more to come. not about being in a pulpit or a pew. It's about being a voice and sharing what you know. So, find the time. Speak the truth in love. Be a voice. Share what you know.
Appreciate that. Great music. Well, you've got some other questions <laughs> for the pastor. I do. I think we only got through <laughs> maybe three or four. We got to the introduction. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you really talk in your book about time wasters. How your time, what you do during the day, what you do with your time is so important. What are some time wasters? It's funny that you said that, and as soon as you said this to me, like 60 seconds ago, I opened up to chapter two in the book, and I saw that number one on the list that I made of what un the unsuccessful people do, number one was waste time. Really? And it's, am it's amazing that you said that because I wasn't really thinking that direction. And then I said, I mentioned something to that, and I looked over there, wasting time, they stop learning. The unsuccessful mm -hmm. people, they stop learning in life. I had somebody brag to me one day, I read a book yesterday. I read a whole book yesterday. And I remember talking to somebody 
not too long ago and I said to them, hey, what are you reading la- right now? And they laughed at me. And they said, they said, I haven't read a book since I got out of school. Really? Now, I know you guys know oh Bob Gass, right? <laughs> oh, you know, yes. Bob Gass is a dear <laughs> friend of mine. And whenever, I haven't talked to him re- as much recently, but I remember he would call me all the time. One of the first things out of him asked, what are you reading, Danny? What are you reading? Because if you're, if you're not reading, you're, you're really not leading. You can't lead if you're not right. learning. But it said, waste time. Stop learning. They fear change. People that are unsuccessful in life, some, this is one of the things they do is they fear change. They don't have any goals in life. You know, right. as you just mentioned that a moment ago, I was thinking of people that I see on the street. And all they do is walk. They don't do anything. They're they're not motivated to change anything in their lives. I've got a brother who's a little over a year older than me. And um, he's, he's that guy. He's the guy you're describing right now. Really? He lives on a little sailboat out in Fort Myers, out in the... And he wakes up in the morning, he's got his little routine he goes to. Hasn't worked in years. Has his, goes to the library. He'll go do this, he'll go do that. He'll, it's just an amazing thing. If you don't have a goal in your life, if you don't know what you're supposed to do, chances are you're gonna end up doing the wrong thing. Yeah. And you gotta fight for that. Whatever that is, you gotta fight for it. Jesus certainly did. Amen. Yes, he did. But time wasters, there's, there's things that just, we can just get in a rut and it'll waste our time. We'll just do it over and over again because a- after all, that's what we've been doing. We'll waste our time on things that aren't productive in life. Successful people have a, have a routine. I mean, my wife never, she knows exactly where I'll be in the morning. I get up before anybody else in the house. She'll come walking right down the hallway. I'll hear her come a couple hours later. How you doing? She knows exactly. She knows I'm not goofing off doing. She knows I'm studying. She, I'm in with my books. I'm in laboring, doing that, wrestling with that in there. Because if you know, if if you stop learning, you stop growing. If you stop learning, you stop leading. You can't even lead yourself. It's true. You know, because then really God doesn't have anything to convict or to convince in our life. You understand? Yeah. If you're not really growing, Jesus said in the or the Lord said in the book of Revelation. What did he say? I wish you were hot or cold. Yes. One or the other. Get hot or cold. If you're lukewarm, I just can't do anything with you. Well, why, did, why does the start stop so many people? Yeah, right? Every, because it's the unknown. And, it's, and uh, Jesus doesn't show you everything. Oh, I could go through the Bible and show you a list of things. He won't show you everything. I mean, if you guys knew the budget you have, you're faced with now and... The, the employees and the, and, the, and the stations all over the countryside and everything else and international television, all this, it might have scared you in the beginning. You, you, maybe you wouldn't have had the faith, but you had the faith to get started. He shows you just like the, the, the headlights on your car. You know, if it's dark by the time I'm leaving, which I hope it's not, right? That's a two and a half hour drive for me if everything goes well and I-75 isn't backed up, right? <laughs> Don't count on right. it. <laughs> well, I've got Especially faith. I've got faith. But at nighttime when we drive, our headlights just show us far in, as far as we need to know. And that's kind of what the Lord normally does with us. Yeah. He, mm-hmm. he, he gives us enough. He lets us see enough. So we're going in faith. We're going in confidence in God. But most times people let the start stop him because, they, well, I don't have enough money. Lord, if you give me a sign, he'll probably even give you a sign to help you because yeah. he's got a job for you to do. But, Char, uh, you know, a preacher of old used to say it all the time. Don't let the start stop you in life. I know a guy that left the state of New York and he headed for Miami. And he, and he, and he was bragging about what a great church he was going to build. And he was just brag, braggadocious about it. And he even told a friend of mine that his church grew to a couple of thousand people after just two or three years. And this man came, was coming down to start this church in Miami, and he says, oh, that's nothing. Wait till you see what God does with me. Do you know he still hadn't started that church in Miami? Because <laughs> he let the start stop him. And yeah. there, there are people watching right now that, 
you know, if the Lord's shown you to do something, do something, get started. Amen. If he's called you to be a missionary, if you don't have a direction yet, at least go get your passport and do something. That's right. right. Yes. Do Amen. something to get, get your, yourself moving in the right direction. So. Well, you said your future is hidden inside your daily routine. It absolutely is. I mean, God, God may have, God may have worldwide industry hidden in the heart of somebody watching right now. He may have an idea. You know, Alexander Graham Bell was not the first guy to come up with telephone. Did you know that? No. I wrote it in the book. There's another you did. fella. That was interesting. The guy. There's in another fellow that had had invented Clark? it. Clark. He he had he had invented it before Graham Bell got a hold of it. And the guy gave up a little bit too soon. That he all he needed to do was make an adjustment. He had developed the telephone to the point where you could hear from it and sound would come up, but it was just static. But it, but he had to adjust a little screw, one screw on the whole thing, one one thousandth of an inch for a voice to come through. And he gave up on That's it. He got amazing. so frustra frustrated he couldn't do it. And then Bell came along later and started taking that idea from where it was and he made the adjustment and now we are known he's known as the person yes. that brought telephone all over the world and you know there may be people watching right now that God wants to make them huge in industry huge in business huge in ministry whatever it is but until you get started you're right. never going to realize it you know there's a lot of people think well, I'm living in a day when everything's been invented already. <laughs> well, that's not the truth. No. There are so many things that God has in mind to invent for you. True. You invent it, God will bless it if you're doing it with the right motives, and that's yeah. part of your book. You know, I was... Uh, I was sitting next to my friend. I'm not going to say his name. His name's John, but I won't say his <laughs> name, all right? And uh, he and I were at a convention. I think it was in Dallas. And Tommy Barnett got up to speak. And Tommy said, then there was about a thousand of us pastors there. And he began to speak almost prophetically. And he said, the greatest churches in America have not been built yet. This was about 20 years ago. The greatest churches in America have not been built yet. The only question is, are you going to be one of them? One of the pastors that, that helped God or yoke up with God and build one of these great churches. And my friend, all the other pastors just cheering and screaming and yelling. And, and I hear my friend say underneath his breath, I'm going to be one of them. I'm going to be one of them. Do you know since then, he's built three mega churches since then. Wow. With multiple thousands of people in each church. It's because wow. he, he didn't let the start. He didn't stop. let the start stop him. Hmm. If you have a dream, you've got to follow. Faith without works is dead. Yes. This is so important to me. Your attitude dictates your altitude. I thought we need to talk about this. Now we all know humility we, and pride. We all know we all have aviation. We all have to fly, right? We all have to go and preach or whatever we're doing. You're traveling somewhere. You're going to take an airplane. Well, I have a little bit of aviation in my background. I was a student pilot and all that. And there's actually, when you learn about the different dynamics of an airplane, you actually find out that the attitude of the wing dictates whether you go up or you go down. Right. And they, they dictate that. And that's actually what it's called, the attitude. Really? Yeah, it, or the angle of attack. But it's called the attitude, but it's really the angle of attack of the wing. Mm -hmm. So if you have enough speed and you pull back on the yoke just a little bit and all you do is raise that attitude of the wing up, that angle of attack, what it does is it causes the molecules over the wings, the air molecules, to be less than what's under it. That's actually what happens. And then you begin to rise. And wow. it's just like our attitude in life. When we lift it up a little bit, we can begin to rise also. Amen. And God's got more in our hearts than probably what we're living. You know, oh, there's yes. probably more, all of us in this studio, there's probably more in our hearts than what we're living. And what that is, is God's dealing with our attitude about let's go higher. He wants to always bring, whenever God talks, think about this. Whenever God talks to you or I, he always talks about the world 
He's always thinking about uh, uh, somebody else. He's never thinking about my comfort. He's always thinking about somebody else and mm-hmm. how we can affect somebody's life because Jesus loves that world out there, those hurting people out there. Amen. Yes, so good. No, that's really the, the whole gospel right there. It's what we're doing to bring the word of God to the population of the world. And you may say, well, you know, we got so many churches here. and Well, that's not the whole world. I was talking to somebody recently, and they told me that they went to a church. They don't, nobody knows really anything about it except in that country. And they're running over 75,000 people. And Amazing. they're changing the nation. Amazing. The whole nation is changing because of that one church. There's a, there's a famous pastor in Los Angeles. He's in heaven now, but he pastored a great church right in the Watts area. And he had a bunch of kids in from YWAM. Do we have time for this quick story? Sure. Had these kids in from YWAM. And... Um, or it was Campus Crusade for Christ, whichever one. And they went to the pastor and they said, hey, can we, uh, do you want to go out witnessing with us? And he said, I pastor a church of thousands right here. Everybody knows me here. And the kid said, well, just come out with us. They went and knocked on the door right across the street. And the kid said, hey, do you know who Pastor so-and-so is? They said, never heard of him. <laughs> <laughs> never heard of him. So we'll let us introduce you to him. So it just goes... We, there's people out there that we think we're reaching everybody, but we're not yeah, reaching. No, That's we're not. right. Well, it's time for Tony LeBron to sing for us again. And we appreciate Tony and his great faithfulness to God. Yes. Tony. The Sea of Galilee is home to so many of our favorite stories in the Bible. Think of it, Jesus walked on the water right out here. Jesus calmed a storm at sea and also called all of his disciples from neighborhoods all around this particular corner of the lake. As I read the Bible and I come to the land of the Bible, I think of one amazing truth. Jesus came to us and he came with one basic message, that he loves us, he will pay the price for our sin and forgive us. And as surely as he came here, my friend, he'll come to you. Wherever you are, whatever you've done, there's still hope. There's still joy. There's life forevermore because of the Jesus of the Sea of Galilee. I'm Andy Cook, helping you experience Israel right now. There are so many different ways to watch the CTN family of networks. We're available on television almost anywhere. Direct TV, Dish Network, Glory Star. We even have a CTN Roku channel. If you live near any of these cities, you can watch us with an indoor outdoor antenna or through your local cable company. Best of all, you can watch CTN anywhere at any time by going to the internet. We're streaming online. Watch your desktop, laptop, tablet, iPad, your phone, or even your watch. Most of our shows are also available on demand. Watch what you want, when you want at ctnonline.com. CTN's family of networks. Take us with you and watch wherever you go.
spelling out a thousand ways how God had touched my life. Through laughter and pain, through struggles and tears, I don't thank him nearly enough. I'm only here now. Oh, God is good. He's so good. Más que llenar mi necesidad, Él cumple mis deseos. El amor que tú me has dado nunca falta, nunca se acaba basta con mirar a los seres que amo recuerdo de nuevo otra vez sus bendiciones oh nunca falta Muchas veces en mi vida me rescató cuando nadie pudo. Oh, I know the God is He's so very good. And so many, so many times in my life. He rescued me when no one else could. Oh, God is, listen, he's an infinite heart. He created the stars. He colored the skies, brought breath into life, and loved us so much. He gave us his own. Thank you, Tony. Well, it's time for We the People. Now, if you don't listen to this, you're missing a lot of education because We the People tells exactly where our nation has come from and where it's going. So you listen to this as Robert gives us we the people. Revival created America. That's a bold statement, but let me point out the facts and then you can decide for yourself. Joseph Galloway, former speaker of the Pennsylvania Assembly and a close friend of Benjamin Franklin said that the revolution was a religious quarrel caused by the Presbyterian and Congregationalists. Let's go back a little further and explain. 
In the 1740s, America didn't look much different than it might today, at least morally speaking. That's when the country experienced a great spiritual awakening. Listen to this account from Jonathan Edwards and see how similar it might sound to where much of our country is today. This is from 1743, quote, Just after my grandfather's death, it seemed to be a time of extraordinary dullness in religion. Licentiousness for some years greatly prevailed among the youth of the town. There were many of them very much addicted to night walking and frequently the tavern, and lewd practices wherein some, by their example, exceedingly corrupted others. Later in this quote, he talks about how families have failed. That's a recount of the moral decline of the country. Then a spiritual revival hit, and here's the result. Quote, but in two or three years after, there began to be a sensible amendment of these evils. The young people, by degrees, left off their frolicking and grew observably more decent in their attendance on the public worship. And there were more that manifested a religious concern than there used to be. But a sermon was now preached on the Sabbath before the lecture to show the evil tendency of the practice and to persuade them to reform it. The young people declared themselves convinced by what they had heard from the pulpit and were willing of themselves to comply with the counsel that had been given. And it was immediately, and I suppose almost universally, complied with. And there was a thorough reformation of these disorders thenceforward, which has continued ever since. A great and earnest concern about the great things of religion and the eternal world became universal in all parts of the town and among persons of all ages. All other talk but about spiritual and eternal things was soon thrown by. The minds of people were wonderfully taken off from the world. It was treated amongst us as a thing of very little consequence. The concerns and conversations of the people turned away from the things of the world and were replaced with conversations about spiritual and eternal things. This revival changed America, especially in the young who grew up and 30 years later declared independence. As Benjamin Franklin's friend said, the revolution was largely a religious quarrel. Once the colonies experienced spiritual freedom, they no longer wanted to report to a tyrannical king. Their spiritual freedom opened their eyes to liberty because the scripture tells us that where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Well, I hope you've learned something about our nation and we see it going this way and that way and but we get back to the basics and yes. we'll be all right you get back into a revival you'll be all right well we've been talking to danny about all kinds of things but mainly how you can be successful now, if you do that under the covering of God, you're going to be all right. Yes. Yes. And Danny, we want you to talk about, what was it? Serving. Serving. <laughs> because oh. your friend talked about how you've got to help others along the way in serving. Yeah, he said that, uh, he said, never show up at success by yourself. <laughs> and, and, and what he was trying to say was, you know, and he actually put it this way, you can always mentor somebody while you're being mentored by somebody else because we all have influence in different ways. Yes. And it's kind of selfish if you learn something not to bring other people along. We have a daycare center in our community and I can't tell you how many people we have taught how to have, even our competition, how to, if, if you want to put it that way in business yeah. terms. We've even taught them how to, how to do it and how to save steps. Pastors all over the country, you know, I, I need to raise 50000 100000 200000 to fund this thing. Well, start a daycare center. Let me show you how to do it. And all this. You, you, so you always, whatever it is in life, if you know something, help somebody else because God will bring people across your path. So Amen. share your knowledge. Yeah. That's Amen. good. That's good. And we want you to share what... Christ really means to you and to you. We have two minutes. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you so much for tuning in, everybody. We're going to make history here. We're going to make history in all of our lives right here, all of us in the studio and in your life right now. Many of you have, you've been watching and you've been interested and maybe you watch on a regular basis CTN, but you're doing it not by accident. We're going to make history because God can change things in your life. 
If you're desperate today, I want you to know something. Jesus is all you'll ever need. If you have sin in your life and you're just ashamed of certain things you've done and you've, you're so ashamed you haven't even forgiven yourself, I want you to know today's the day you're going to make history in your life because you're going to actually forgive yourself. You're going to forgive yourself. So let's do that right now. You're, if you've never been saved, this is the time to do it. Just bow your head right now. Pray a very simple prayer with me. Just say, Heavenly Father, thank you for sending Jesus, paying the price for my sin, which is death. Jesus, you died for me. So I'm asking you now, come into my heart, fill me with your spirit, and make the Bible come alive to me. If you did that, I want you to know something on the inside has changed. Now you have a right as a child of God. You have a right to go to him for anything and he'll answer your prayers because he loves you. He cares for you. And he wants to be involved in all the areas of your life. And he's got a job for you to do. So today, let's do this, everybody. Not only have, are you born again, you've committed your life to Christ, but now number two, Number two, he's got a job for you to do. Amen. So keep your faith in God today, okay? Amen. God Amen. bless you all. <laughs> we love you. God bless. Bye-bye.